In this presentation, you will learn about critical theory. Critical theory is the product of a group of German neo-Marxists who were dissatisfied with the state of Marxian theory, particularly its tendency towards economic determinism. The organization associated with critical theory, the Institute of Social Research, was officially founded in Frankfurt, Germany on 23rd February 1923. Critical theory has spread beyond the confines of the Frankfurt School. Critical theory was and is largely a European orientation, although its influence in American sociology has grown. Critical theory is composed largely of criticisms of various aspects of social and intellectual life, but its ultimate goal is to reveal more accurately the nature of society. Criticism of Marxian Theories Critical theory takes as its starting point a critique of Marxian theories. The critical theorists are most disturbed by the economic determinists the mechanists or mechanical Marxists. Some criticize the determinism implicit in parts of Marx's original work, but most focus their criticisms on the neo-Marxists primarily because they had interpreted Marx's work too mechanicalistically. The critical theorists do not say that economic determinists were wrong in focusing on the economic realm, but that they should have been concerned with other aspects of social life as well. The critical school seeks to rectify this imbalance by focusing its attention on the cultural realm. In addition to attacking other Marxian theories, the critical school critiqued societies such as the former Soviet Union built ostensibly on Marxian theory. Criticisms of Positivism Critical theorists also focus on the philosophical underpinnings of scientific inquiry, especially positivism. The criticism of positivism is related, at least in part, to the criticism of economic determinism because some of those who were determinists accepted part or all of the positivist theory of knowledge. Positivism is depicted as accepting the idea that a single scientific method is applicable to all fields of study. Positivism is opposed by the critical school on various grounds. For one thing, positivism tends to reify the social world and see it as a natural process. The critical theorists prefer to focus on human activity as well as on the ways in which such activity affects larger social structures. In short, positivism loses sight of the actors, reducing them to passive entities determined by natural forces. Given their belief in the distinctiveness of the actor, the critical theorists would not accept the idea that the general laws of science can be applied without question to human action. Positivism is depicted as accepting the idea that a single scientific method is applicable to all fields of study. It takes the physical sciences as the standard of certainty and exactness for all disciplines. Positivists believe that knowledge is inherently neutral. They feel that they can keep human values out of their work. Criticisms of Sociology Sociology is attacked for its scientism that is, for making the scientific method an end in itself. In addition, sociology is accused of accepting the status quo. The critical school maintains that sociology does not seriously criticize society or seek to transcend the contemporary social structure. Sociology, the critical school contends, has surrendered its obligation to help people oppressed by contemporary society. Members of this school are critical of sociologists' focus on society as a whole rather than on individuals in society. Sociologists are accused of ignoring the interaction of the individual and society. Although most sociological perspectives are not guilty of ignoring this interaction, this view is a cornerstone of the critical school's attacks on sociologists. 
because they ignore the individual sociologists are seen as being unable to say anything meaningful about political changes that could lead to a just and humane society critique of modern society the critical school focuses primarily on one form of formal rationality modern technology marcus for example was a severe critic of modern technology at least as it is employed in capitalism he saw technology in modern capitalist society as leading to totalitarianism in fact he viewed it as leading to new more effective and even more pleasant methods of external control over individuals the prime example is the use of television to socialize and pacify the population marcus rejected that idea that technology is neutral in the modern world and saw it instead as a means to dominate people it is effective because it is made to seem neutral when it is in fact enslaving it serves to suppress individuality the actors in a freedom has been invaded and whittled down by modern technology the result is what marcus called one dimensional society in which individuals lose the ability to think critically and negatively about society Marcus did not see technology per se as the enemy but rather technology as it is employed in modern capitalist society technology no matter how pure sustains and streamlines the continuum of domination this fatal link can be cut only by a revolution which makes technology and technique subservient to the needs and goals of free men Marcus retained Marx's original view that technology is not inherently a problem and that it can be used to develop a better society critique of culture the critical theorists level significant criticisms at what they call the culture industry the rationalized bureaucratized structures that control modern culture interest in the culture industry reflects their concern with the marxian concept of superstructure rather than with the economic base The culture industry producing what is conventionally called mass culture is defined as the administered non-spontaneous reified phony culture rather than the real thing. Two things worry the critical thinkers most about this industry. First, they are concerned about its falseness. They think of it as a prepackaged set of ideas mass produced and disseminated to the masses by the media. Second, the critical theorists are disturbed by its pacifying, repressive and stupefying effect on people. The critical school is also interested in and critical of what it calls the knowledge industry, which refers to entities concerned with knowledge production. This has come about because of autonomous structures in our society. Their autonomy has allowed them to extend themselves beyond their original mandate. they have become oppressive structures interested in expanding their influence throughout society criticisms of critical theory a number of criticisms have been leveled at the critical theory first critical theory has been accused of being largely ahistorical of examining a variety of events without paying much attention to their historical and comparative context this is a damning criticism of any marxian theory which should be inherently historical and comparative second the critical school as we have seen already generally has ignored the economy finally and relatedly critical theorists have tended to argue that the working class has disappeared as a revolutionary force a position decidedly in opposition to traditional marxian analysis criticisms such as these led traditional marxists such as bottomer to conclude the frankfurt school in its original form and as a school of marxism or sociology is dead similar sentiments have been expressed by griezmann who labels critical theory the paradigm that failed if it is dead as a distinctive school that is because many of its basic ideas have found their way into marxism neo marxian sociology and even mainstream sociology thus as bottomer himself concludes in the case of habermas the critical school has undergone a rapprochement with marxism and sociology 
and at the same time some of the distinctive ideas of the Frankfurt School are conserved and developed. Thank you for watching the presentation.